Hey YouTube, Kira Twig here, bringing you all my Labyrinth Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile. This is a deck that focuses on setting up a bunch of different normal traps and then using the many different Labyrinth monsters to gain additional card effects when you activate and resolve these normal traps. Also having their field spell set up additional effects when you use those cards and just being able to set up and special summon different fiend monsters on the field to have recycle power with the normal traps. So we run a pretty good amount of generic normal traps in this deck to make overall use of its playstyle along with the many different labyrinth monsters that we run. So let's go ahead and get started with the deck profile. So for the monsters for the main deck, I'm running two copies of Ariane, the Labyrinth Servant. You can send one normal trap from your hand or that's set on your field with the graveyard to special summon one level four lower fiend monster from your deck in defense position, except for Ariane, the Labyrinth Servant. If another monster has been on the field, uh, leaves the field basically by a normal trap effect, except during the damage step you can draw one card then you can apply this effect uh, except during the uh, damage step you can draw one card and from your hand either special summon one fiend monster or set one spell card or trap and then you can use each effect of Ariane the labyrinth servant once per turn so it's your setup one of the main cards you want to go into is your next labyrinth monster but being able to summon out that additional monster gives you extra deck access having two monsters set up on the field easily also just being able to give you draw power off of activating a normal drop on the field which there are plenty of normal traps that you can just easily activate whenever with this deck and for the next labyrinth monster i am running three ariana uh the labyrinth servant when this card is normal or special summon you can add one labyrinth card from your deck to your hand except for ariana the labyrinth servant and if another monster uh, leaves the field by a normal trap except during the damage step you can draw one card then apply this effect to then take one card that uh, special summon from the fiend monster or set one spell or trap so with this play you have the option to take from your hand uh, one special summon fiend monster so that play can give you one uh, monster special summon on the field including your Ariane, the labyrinth servant to just get more of a monster swarm on the field with this card set up like that being able to then summon out another monster and then just the continuous draw power that you have every time you activate a normal trap i only run one copy of lovely labyrinth of the silver castle it gives you prevention for your opponent not being able to activate monster effects when you activate your normal trap so they can't activate anything in response to cards like your compulsory evacuation device or torrential tribute that we run and the deck and then just also giving you some reset power if a monster leaves the field by your normal trap effect except during the damage step you can destroy one card your opponent controls with this card um, and also being able to set up more of those cards on the field is always a bonus to this i only run one of this card though it can be recycled with other cards in the deck so that's why i feel you really only need one card copy of Lovely Labyrinth in the deck. For some of the other Labyrinth monsters, I also run three Labyrinth, uh, Shang Draglier. This is a card that can help with its quick effect. You can send this card from your hand or field to the graveyard and discard one card. Set one Labyrinth Spell Trap from your hand or deck. If a monster leaves the field by your normal trap effect, while this card's in your graveyard, except during the damage step, you can add this card to your hand. You can only use each effect of Labyrinth Shang Draglier once per turn. So this is more of a recycle power, being able to send this card from your hand or field to the graveyard and discard one card to set one Labyrinth Spell or Trap, giving you more access to some of these specific cards you may need including some of the labyrinth trap lineup including the oh so important welcome labyrinth for that trap setup being able to use it with the field spell and then just being able to recycle this card back to your hand helps for some of the other discard power that our other labyrinth monsters share and for the other Labyrinth Monster, I also run three Labyrinth Stove Torby. Quick effect, you can send this card from your hand or field to the graveyard and discard one card to set one Labyrinth Spell Trap from your hand or deck. If a monster leaves the field by your normal trap effect while this card's in your graveyard, except during the damage step, you can special summon this card. You can only use each effect of Stovey once per turn. So the add back helps because then you have a hand resource with Shandrag Lear. And then the field presence, thanks to Stove Torby, just being able to summon it onto the field. It is a once per turn, but as long as you have that monster, you have the extra deck access that I was speaking of before, along with some of your other Labyrinth monsters. And then for additional support for the Labyrinth Monsters, being a pretty big Fiend setup deck, I also run three Absolute King Backjack. This card was readily available in the new set as well. During your opponent's turn, quick effect, you can banish this card from your graveyard, excavate the top card of your deck, and if it is a normal trap, set it on your field, otherwise send it to the graveyard. That set card can be activated this turn, and if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can look at three cards on the top of your deck, then place them on the top of the deck in any order. You can only use each effect of Absolute King Backjack once per turn. So you run 
a pretty good amount of traps in this deck, so the odds that the top three will at least have a trap for you to set up on the top of the deck, and then being able to banish back Jack from the graveyard to set it up on the field is very, very useful, because then you go into the plays that the deck is meant to do, and that is just to set up the traps to then use with your Labyrinth Monsters. That is it for the main deck monsters. For these spells, the only spell I run is two Labyrinth Labyrinth, your field spell. If you activate a set Welcome Labyrinth normal trap, you can add this additional effect to this card at resolution. Also, after that, destroy one card in the field. It's just an additional effect on top of Welcome Labyrinth, so very, very useful for additional destruction. And if you activate a non-Labyrinth normal trap card, except during the damage step, you can special summon one fiend monster from your hand or graveyard. You can only use each effect of Labyrinth Labyrinth once per turn. So whether you summon out your Ariana onto the field or your Ariane, you have all of these special summons to make use of by your field spell, giving you more of a monster presence that Stove Torby and hand presence that Shandraglier also provide. And that is it, like I said, for the spells. It's the only spell that I run in the deck. For the traps, I am running three Welcome Labyrinth, Special Summon 1 Labyrinth Monster from your deck, also until the end of the next turn. After this card resolves, you can add Special Summon monsters from the deck or extra deck, except for Fiend Monsters. And if a monster leaves the field by your normal trap effect, while this card is in your graveyard, except the turn it was sent there, you can set this card. You can waste each effect of Welcome Labyrinth once per turn. So that is another reason why I only run one copy of Lovely Labyrinth of the Silver Castle because you can just summon her onto the field banks of this card. It does restrict some of your extra deck plays, but then you at least have that monster setup that you're meant to do with this deck and plenty of other distractions and also destruction to use off of the many other normal traps we run the deck. And the fact that it can be, uh, you know, reset on the field and also have a destruction effect placed on top of it, thanks to Labyrinth Labyrinth, makes it all the better. I also run two Archfiend's Ghastly Glitch. If you control a Fiend monster, target one card on the field, destroy it, then you can send one Fiend monster from your deck to the graveyard. So with it, it's more graveyard setup for some of the recycle, depending on which one you want to send, whether it's a Chandra Glear or your Stove Torby. It's great for that, and also just being able to destroy an additional card on the field after even setting up more in your graveyard. I also run two Fair Welcome Labyrinth with this one. When a monster declares an attack, will you control a Fiend monster, target one card on the field negate the attack if you do destroy that targeted card then you can set one non-labyrinth normal trap from your hand or deck so more additional setup for the many different normal traps which we'll get to in just a second for the deck i just want to run some of these two ups you do run other options to get to these cards much much more quickly in the deck i just find them useful for that play of also having labyrinth in their name for the fair welcome labyrinth and then welcome labyrinth as well for some of the other normal traps in the deck, I run three compulsory evacuation device just for the additional easy activation. All you have to do is have an opponent's monster on the field and you can bounce it back to their hand and then activate many other effects in this deck. Three torrential tribute on top of the draw power that your normal traps will provide you, uh, during, you know, not during the damage step. You'll get a draw and destroy all of your opponent's monsters on the field, which if they're sent to your graveyard, it's really not that big of an issue because it's much easier for you to at least replenish your field thanks to some of the other cards you're running. I also run three Paleozoic Dinomiscus. I really do like this card in the deck with some of the big problems in the game being focused around destruction. Cards like Mirror Jade, if you were to destroy them, you would just give your opponent additional uh, card effects. So if you can either bounce it back to their hand or banish it with Dinomiscus, all the better. And it's also a trap that can be special summoned from the graveyard back onto the field. I also run three Infinite Permanents. I don't run Ash Blossom, but I did want to run one Hand Trap of choice, and that's where this card comes in handy, just being able to activate it if your opponent went first and you have no other cards on your field. With some of the lower numbers for the traps being two Dogmatica Punishment, you target one face-up monster your opponent controls, send one monster with an equal or higher attack from your extra deck to the graveyard. If you do, destroy that monster until the end of your next turn after this card resolves. You can have special summon from the extra deck. You can activate one Dogmatica Punishment per turn. So you have the options for the additional destruction of cards thanks to cards like Elder Anony Nits from the extract to the graveyard with this card. And lastly, the two trap trick, just being able to set up other traps by banishing them, also helps with some of the lower numbers for the newer Archfiend and Labyrinth cards that I run in the deck with this card. I only run two, though, because it does limit you to your trap activation, which can be a big part of your defense. It's just here for the setup. Once again, after you activate trap trick, you can activate the card you set the turn it's set, but you can only activate one trap for the rest of that turn. 
And that is it for the main deck. We'll now move on to the extra deck. I run two Link Karibo. These are in here for the back jack setup. I actually considered running a third copy just so you can link summon into this card with back jack, setting it up in the graveyard and giving you your trap play. I also run the one Master King Archfiend since you are locked into Fiend Monsters for a good part of it. And also one We Witch's Apprentice, one Dark the Dark Charmer, one Barricade Board Blocker for the Field Spell Recycle, one Nightmare Phoenix, one Nightmare Cerberus, and one Nightmare Unicorn for the rest of the Link Monsters. And for the Fusion Monsters, the two Elder Entity for the Dogmatica Punishment Trap. And also one Abyss Dweller, one Baguska, and one Utopia, and one Utopia the Lightning to finish off the Xyz Monsters for the Extra Deck. As for some of the go-to plays, the backjack play is pretty self-explanatory. If you link one into your Link Kribo with the backjack, you can then have the option for this card, if it's sent to the graveyard, to look at the top three cards of your deck, place on the top of your deck in any order, setting up the particular trap you may need if you reveal it, and let's just say an additional monster, to then use for the banish off of backjack, to set that up on the field for you to use, and then also to be fully utilized with some of the other Labyrinth monsters that you run in the deck, special summoning them out onto the field with their own plays, or even just setting up more by sending a normal trap from your field. It could be the card needed, thanks to cards like Ariane, to then summon out other ones on the field like Ariana, and then overlaying or using them for extra deck plays, along with their own additional trap setup. But that is it for the deck profile. I hope you all enjoyed the video. With that, we finished all of the decks from the new Tactical Masters booster set. I will be updating these decks with the following release of Darkwing Blast because we will be getting new support, I believe, for all three of them as well in that booster set. So look forward to it. And as always, until next time, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And Kira Twig out.